This is Albert signing into Kane's Wrath on the map tournament stadium in the top left hand corner as the green random nod. This is Eclipse. And in the bottom right hand corner, spawning as the orange random marked of Kane, this is Master Leaf. Tournament Stadium, I feel like this used to be one we saw a lot, and we just haven't seen it very much anymore. I don't know entirely if that's uh, due to the fact that it's been played less, or if it's just sort of one of those uh, observation effects. You notice what you notice, and you don't notice what you don't notice, and so maybe it's just been played the same amount, and I just haven't gotten the replays. But Nod versus Marked of Kane, well... In a recent tournament, there were some Marked of Cain games where it felt like, uh, depending on the strategy you go for, Marked of Cain is, oh, we have a fast? But what is he doing with this? All right, so we're right out of the gate. We got a Reckoner. Is he going to go Tib Spike Rocket or Tib Trooper Rocket Squad? I guess not. He might be going, I don't know what he's doing. He got one Tib Trooper and an Engineer inside of this Reckoner, and he's sending it all the way along the south side of the map. Mark of Cain, I feel like, can have some advantages depending on the build you're going for. And we saw that uh, Drive versus Bike Rush owned some really aggressive strategies work really well with Mark of Cain for this exact reason that you just saw. Those Awakened squads are tough, especially when you build them like this. You don't just get them drafted from the cell of something else. And this is making Eclipse a little bit nervous. Now, Eclipse going for multiple bikes right out of the gate, out of that War Factory. And Master Leaf does see this. This does delay the bikes a little bit there. As you saw, they got a bit of repairs. Three bikes, a fourth bike it looks like is not on the way. So Eclipse going to be poking out with some potential damage. But Laser Turrets are here to keep the four bikes of Master Leaf off his back. Back and Eclipse dropping two bikes right from the get-go, even though he had defender's advantage. This is going terribly for Eclipse. And somewhere that engineer popped out, I assume, to grab that Tib Spike. And this Tib Trooper's slowing down the Harvesters, making it harder for them to escape. But Master Leaf doesn't have a lot of bikes left. One Harvester down, and this is an expensive attack that Master Leaf is going for. If he is going to... Oh, the ball, the ball gets the damage, but not a lot on that Reckoner. And it looks like Master Leaf has mostly fallen to pieces here. He does get the Rocket Squad and a couple of other infantry squads, and the ball does not do the damage to that Reckoner. As you can see, uh, Eclipse trying to utilize the fact that the ball does damage when it drops to do extra damage and kill this Reckoner that much more quickly. This Reckoner really not doing very much damage. This is totally distracting Eclipse. This is wasting his time. Eclipse going, I think, for a second War Factory because of how chaotic and insane this opening has been. I think he's going to go double War Factory before the expand. Tournament Stadium, a bit further of a drive. Okay, there's the second War Factory. A bit further of a drive to your natural expansion, but then your third is relatively close, unlike some of the other community-made maps. And it looks like the tip spike has maybe been reclaimed, or uh, that engineer just went off to do something else. But it looks like Eclipse and Master Leaf are both a little bit slow on the natural expansion. They're not where you would normally be, but that's, of course, because of how chaotic and aggressive that opening was. Eventually, the Reckoner does go down. Eclipse, maybe not dealing with it in the most cost-effective way, but overall, he did shut it down. He lost only one Harvester to it, and it's into... Whoa! Uh, we got a Secret Shrine. We have Advanced Cybernetics, or Cybernetic Legs, rather, coming out here, and Advanced Infantry being deployed by Master Leaf in mass. Tib Troopers, Awakened Squad, Enlightened Squads, everything is sort of coming out here from Master Leaf, and he is playing Mark of Kane in a pretty aggressive way, but also he's doing all of this on one base economy. So keep that in mind in the back of your head. This attack has a bit of a run timer on it that is going to elapse 
Of course, you could power up these Enlightened Squads even more. By the way, Eclipse going to be able to steal this Blue Tiberium, something very nice for him, especially since his natural expansion also hasn't been established just yet. No Black Hand Squads. It's all up to these buggies, and they're doing a pretty good job of cleaning up this Infantry Swarm. So that was a bit of a misplay by Master Leaf. He, I think, was assuming it would be all bikes or like 90% bikes against which this this group would do really really well as you can see those bikes evaporating against the enlightened squads and even the the buggies do get cleaned up relatively quickly if you have enough enlightened squads i don't know that it's totally cost effective but the bikes just get disappeared by enlightened and that's clearly what Master Leaf was going for. He was thinking that Eclipse was going to be going for a bit more of a bike-heavy uh, group. And uh, the result would have been absolute decimation of Eclipse's forces. But the buggies were able to, at least at the for the moment, hold Master Leaf back. Master Leaf going even bigger with the Enlightened Squads, even going to be able to garrison up some of these buildings. Double Tib Troopers to really slow these vehicles down, harass them just a little bit, and finally the natural expansion economies are being established. And we saw Eclipse get there a little bit sooner in terms of actually having a refinery placed. And this War Factory by Master Leaf, the sneaky boy that he is, claims the War Factory of Eclipse. And that is a little bit unfortunate there for Eclipse, building that second war factory and then losing it to the Leaf Man. Bikes, buggies, and scorpions coming in for both players, and Master Leaf would love to hold on to this just to cause even more pain, even more problems for Eclipse. EMPs coming in here once again, and these scorpion tanks from Master Leaf are going to be absolutely massive if the EMPs keep landing like this. Master Leaf cleaning up buggy after buggy, scorpion after scorpion, focusing down the bikes with the enlightened squads as well, and Master Leaf finding the damage, finding the kill against a very stock standard straight through the front door nod kind of play that Eclipse is doing. Mass shredder turrets as Eclipse tries desperately to come up with new solutions on the fly to a, to a problem that I don't know that he's ever seen before. This style of Mark Duffkane is not common, but I don't even know another player who has done this kind of a build. And it's working out really well th with the big division between your main and your natural. Now, the only thing that Master Leaf doesn't have is the ability to detect stealth. These scorpion tanks are just going to eat up the scorpions of Eclipse, grab some of these harvesters while they're docked and unstealthed, perhaps. But scorpions also getting distracted in the north. Master Leaf not getting absolute maximum damage because he's fighting these shredder turrets. One by one, the tanks of Master Leaf do seem to be falling. He's getting pretty good trades against the forces of Eclipse, but I mean, I don't know that this is really how Eclipse wanted to be spending his cash. He is absolutely in survival mode. Master Leaf regrouping all of his tanks, and it looks like he has got that War Factory back up to 66% health or so, and the laser, the laser fence is back. Master Leaf with a big group of Scorpion tanks expanding off of the back of this. He's finally got his two refineries up and running. Under a normal circumstance, you would never place your refineries that close together at your natural expansion against a Nod player. But Master Leaf does it here, and he's got Eclipse on the ropes enough that he's not worried about a catalyst. He's not worried about getting clicked. Eclipse starting to fall to pieces, and it really started happening when Master Leaf regrouped his tanks. The flame tank coming in, a perfect call here by Eclipse. It's moments too slow, it's moments too late as Master Leaf burns it down, and because he already targeted down that operation center, no more flame tanks. Laser turrets are buying time. Eclipse doesn't have an answer, and now his power plants are exposed. You can see he has been wheeling and dealing and trying to come up with a solution, built another operation center but that's more money spent on buildings and not on units panic fanatics coming out from eclipse panic fanatics like we haven't seen in a long time and eclipse might just have to sell off his entire main base and focus his defense at his natural expansion and there we go he does sell just everything there as uh he pivots down a little bit further south buys himself a lot of time no rocket squads all fanatics 
all laser turrets, scorpions. That is his composition, and it feels like Master Leaf is starting to run away with this game, piece by piece, bit by bit. Master Leaf with apparently no harvesters on his main base. A lot of blue Tiberium as well. One of the players could grab that. Another flame tank is here. Master Leaf pivots around the right side of this stadium stand of those bleachers, and he is going to be losing that war factory. But of course, he is repositioning to try and fight a weaker area where there's less defenses. Panic fanatics are going to be need to need to be dealt with by Master Leaf at some point. And Eclipse has survived the onslaught for now. Absolute insane pressure from Master Leaf. I cannot believe the way this Marked of Cain versus Nod has developed. Up to tier three, maybe even a chemical plant coming in. That would be a really good way to nuke the economy of Eclipse, who has just been taking attack after attack after attack. Nice catch by Master Leaf. Sees the flame tank, shuts it down. Nothing, nothing sneaks through the net. And this is where Eclipse really needs to get vision on Master Leaf because there is a valuable target there. Okay, he went right for the Redeemer, which suddenly makes this tech lab a very big target for Master Leaf to, to, to focus on. And even suiciding his tanks in to kill that tech center may be worth it. Master Leaf spreading his scorpions all throughout the map. He really wants to deny scouting. He really wants to deny any positioning. And, uh, well, this this one militant squad and the harvesters actually as well. These must, I assume these are uh, holographic harvesters, hallucinated harvesters. This is the decoy army in use, and it is for scouting purposes. So you can decoy army cloaked units, and that's... A great way to take a look around the map and to quickly, uh, you know, get some vision to potentially delete some stuff of your opponent. I actually don't see a chemical plant. Master Leaf, on the other hand, does have a chemical plant. So I have a feeling this Tib Trooper is here to remove one of these Tib refineries. And of course, you can keep the Catalyst missile around. And if you wait for your opponent to deploy their own chemical plant, then your Catalyst Missile can nuke their chemical plant right out of the gate. Eclipse sets up at his third base, but he finds, oh shoot, Master Leaf is already here with an MCV, with a Redeemer on the way, and Avatars as well. Master Leaf pivoting to the north and to the south with just Scorpion tanks. It's extremely difficult for Eclipse to clean up Master Leaf's high quality infantry. That high-end infantry from Marked of Cain can be powerful as we see it right in this game. The Dancing Scorpion really freaking out there. Just caught by a little bit of a glitch there in Cain's Wrath. All right, first EMP lands. Redeemer versus Redeemer. Where's the avatar for Master Leaf? Okay, there's the first beam cannon. That was my next question for Master Leaf is where are your beam cannons, man? Master Leaf big on the beam cannon. And actually, he's going to be arming up these avatars with dual lasers. So these guys do put out a lot of damage, and we've seen in the past a fully heroic dual beam avatar can just about 1v1 a redeemer. Rage Gen fires off. It doesn't really affect these fanatics. It looks like they had already been receiving an attack order, so it is going to be a ton of damage onto Master Leaf's redeemer. Even the Scorpion Tank's blocking them off a little bit here, and it looks like the Rage Gen firing off and stopping Master Leaf from retreating. Blocks off the Redeemer of Eclipse with a secret shrine and Eclipse marches right past it. He's going for blood. He's going for the kill. The EMP locks down everything. Master Leaf deleting his own buildings from the build queue and he doesn't even care. This is all about killing the Redeemer and he barely does it. Master Leaf kills the Redeemer of Eclipse and he's going to immediately lose his own Redeemer as the Obelisk comes in and removes that from the fight. On the north side, Master Leaf does have his own third refineries going down up there. And the Cat Catalyst Missile catches two refineries of Eclipse. A huge amount of cash down the drain for Eclipse. And Master Leaf holding on to this game so, so well. Going to be getting stealth detection on that avatar as well by copying it from the bike. And wow, all of the refineries completely gone. Master Leaf calling in possibly a uh, Tib Vapor Bomb on top of this, what was a refinery, and now is just a blank space between a couple of obelisks. So he's going to try once again to punch down these obelisks. He gets one of them, and the second one does survive for the current moment. But two avatars with dual beams, Master Leaf is going to be able to melt through these units. 
gets himself more stealth detection just fully charged up here avatars here i guess they could go for uh uh it's stealth with the stealth tank and then flame as well but they just burn through units and master leaf i think has finally bought himself enough breathing room eclipse this guy is an absolute legend with how well he is holding on to this game and the fact that he got as close as he did gg gets called eclipse has been defeated and that will do it for this game what an absolute pile on from master leaf it was i mean that's like zero to a hundred and then you just keep holding down the gas maybe two moments in that whole game was master leaf not on the attack either actively or through taking his opponent's third base and setting up his redeemer engineering facility which no obelisk wars master leaf went multi mcv he had a potential obelisk advantage over eclipse but he chose not to engage in that path he instead went for avatars with crazy upgrades and it actually ended up working EMPs kind of falling off towards the end of the game and the infantry didn't play a huge part but that was a fantastic showcase of different strategies and different techniques from Master League but also Eclipse dang that defense from Eclipse was phenomenal for 80 90 percent of that game he just did not have the Tiberium to keep fueling it especially towards the end of that game where he lost all of his refiners. That will do it for this game, for this video. Thank you all very much for watching, and this is Cyber, signing out.